All right, all you wonderful chess hoodlums in chess land, welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. Heck week is over, yeah! What better way to celebrate than playing an Alexander Alekin game that has great bishops? I've had actually a few requests this week to do more videos discussing the bishops and I think that's a great idea. Apparently in some of my earlier videos, I worked on the knights and I worked on the rooks and I've been working on the rooks, but I never really did uh, do a lot with the bishops. So I'm going to amend that this weekend, I hope. I can do five or six different videos on bishops. I'll describe once again the situation bishops work best in and I'll try to find some games with good bishops. This is a good game. Alekin versus a Leuvenfish in the All-Russians Master Tournament in 1914. So this was almost yesterday. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. 1914 was a hundred and five years ago and this is still relevant. No joke. Good game. Great game. By the way, I'm loving being in the Backyard Professor fan club. Uh, Joan, J-O-E-N-E. -E. I don't know if, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Sorry. He's from the Netherlands or Norway or somewhere. Sorry. I'm not trying to offend you, bro. I promise. Um, anyway, he started the Backyard Professor fan club and it is a hoot. We've been playing some games. I've been getting my butt kicked. You guys are seeing how lousy I really am. And you see, I'm not kidding. I'm on the beginning end climbing the mountain with all of you. You're already way the heck up there. What you guys need to do is show some charity to me, turn around on the mountain and throw a rope down to me and help haul me up this thing, man. I'm not the one that should be making the videos telling you about chess. You guys are all better than I am. I'm going to be surprised if anyone keeps watching these silly videos. <laughs> but please do. It's a lot of fun. Fun to interact with you. The uh, the tactics puzzles are just kicking my fanny, man. I just, I keep going down and down. and Man, I was almost in the 1400 range tonight. I mean, it's just, go. Oh. Some nights I can see them and other nights I just, I lose 15 or 20 of them in a row. It sucks. But that's the exercises, right? I mean, we've got exercise to, to get into shape for chess. We have to work out constantly and work on it. All right, let's get on with this game. Fun game. My favorite grandmaster. He's playing white, Alekin. Leuvenfish is playing the black pieces. Leuvenfish was exceedingly strong. He was one of the best of the Russian players. He really was. Uh, this is a great game. They, they both just played their hearts out. And uh, it's, a, it's the Rui Lopez opening. Bit classic bishop comes up. The classic pawn says hello to the bishop. And the bishop bumps down. All in good form. Knight f6, absolutely. Queen e2. He pulls out his queen, the bishop, he's going to get ready to castle up here, Leuvenfish will. C3, which is a classic bump, so the bishop can come here if he, if he does, when he gets further attacked by the pawns, which is right now. Although he doesn't go to C2 yet, he stays at B3, keeping that central angle just as far as he can. And now Leuvenfish does castle. And Alekin hits the A4. He says in his note, he said, that wasn't my best response. He said, my, my reply should have been here. And he said, and Leuvenfish did the proper reply in the center. Alekin was a little bit mad at himself. He should have bumped the pawn. But he didn't, and so he's got to deal with what he's given himself. So he does take the B pawn. And the D pawn will take notice on the edge, on the wing. Alekin is attacking on the wing, and the response of Leuvenfish is in the center attacking. That's always the correct response. 
Yes, keep that in mind. That is really important to know. That changes the whole nature of the game. So, Alakin's being hit. He does find a good square for his knight. And Black brings his knight back, hitting the pawn, letting him know he's keeping his eye on him. And the pawn comes charging through, takes the other pawn, not to worry. The bishop comes to f5. Now you can both see, you can see that they're both uh, arguing for the center pretty good. Not bad. And Alakin does bump the bishop down to make sure this pawn needs to be attacked. It is very well supported and it is on his side and it's making headway and it's going to become too powerful if the queen comes up in here and the rook grabs that file, that's spooky. So Alakin says, right now, all other options are off the table. I attack the pawn. That makes it central pawn. And it's make. yes, they're doubled, but notice they're not blockaded. That's uh, a proper response to a doubled pawn, which can make them targets but these pawns are not blockaded, they are mobile. However, look, the knight's hitting it, the queen is hitting it, and the bishop is hitting it. That's why to Alakin's way of thinking, the bishop here is serving, you know, I mean, it's hitting directly at the, but uh, you've got one, two supporters, and a third one that can come in, and a rook coming along, it's more important at this point, rather than aiming at the king and that weak pawn there, now let's attack the right pawn in the right spot, or that's really going to clobber Alakin. That, that makes sense. That The move before he went to here, and you're thinking, well, he probably just wasted a move doing that. No, he had his purpose. But when this became stronger, now you attack it. So it wasn't a waste of a move. It's just he's rearranging his priorities. Notice his flexibility, and that's something else I've been meaning to say for the last, say, like a hundred and umpteen thousand videos. <sighs> In our chess games, you come up with a plan. Silman talks about the plan. You know, you plan your plan around the imbalances in the in the game. But your opponent is also playing the game with you, right? And he's going to make moves that you don't expect, either for good or bad. We might have a plan to do something, but because of the way the opponent moves, it doesn't become feasible. We have to be flexible enough to adjust including where we put our pieces and where we were going to put our pieces, maybe that won't be as effective now that the opponent did something we didn't expect or did something even stronger than we expected. And now we have to change where we play. Both, both in the position on the board sometimes and which pieces? Yeah, we really, really, really want to move our knight. However, at this point, it's vastly more important to move the bishop. So, move the bishop. Flexibility. Actually, yeah, I might, I might actually call that the fourth pillar. That's really, actually, really important. So, anyway, that's, that's why we saw the move makes sense because of that pawn. Now we know why Alakin, instead of putting his knight here or, or over here somewhere or straight back, no, have it here because he's also hitting that pawn. You see how the moves kind of jive. Chuck and jive. We're chucking and jiving, man. Yeah, that's why. Okay, so... 
enough lecturing for the love of Sam Walton, man. And look at what uh, Leuvenfish does. Leuvenfish was a very strong grandmaster. Now, this was 1914. They're not grandmasters yet. Uh, this is the tournament of the masters, but they're very, very strong at this point. Uh, I think they were both masters by now. I'm not sure if they were grandmasters, but really strong. And Leuvenfish had a long, profitable career, too. He was, he was in there for decades. He was good. Look at the uh, Queen D5. Oh, heaven, Jess. Look at the power of that first pillar in Black's position. Central control. Central dominance. Central. He's actually occupying a lot of the center. You don't have to to have control. But man, when you when you occupy it, that's a great way to do it, man. And no wonder Alican's sweating bullets about things. He's saying, whoo, holy cow. Man, I have to play on my toes. Watch what he does. Now, you're in this position as white. Uh, <laughs> You're not going to worry about attacking the king right now. Really seriously. This position does not call for you to attack the king. This position calls for you to absolutely attack the center. Because it's powerful. I mean, holy goodness glory. That is amazing. Watch. Alakin pushes the C pawn. Now, this does two things. And granted, it's not an overly magnificent move. Very functional, though. Yeah. One, it hits the queen. One of the main pieces. Just virtually owning the center. So that can't be bad. The second thing it does... When he bumped his pawn to give his bishop a route down, it blockaded his own knight development. You can't do that and expect to win the game against Leuvenfish. So bumping that pawn does hit the center, and it gives him a chance to get his knight into the game, which is truly one of the very best pieces for helping control fight for, and conquer the center. So that makes sense. Yeah. Good little move. Not, not super flashy, magnificent. Doesn't have to be. Now, Leuvenfish, I've said before, you know, sometimes you can ignore what your opponent does when they threaten a piece. And that's true. Sometimes you have to respond, though. Uh, this is the point of practicing chess. You know, you just, you gotta make your thousands of mistakes on when to ignore it and when to respond to it, right? Lubinfish does respond, but no, I'm just I'm just doing this to help us uh, get a little bit better grasp of something. It's subtle. Uh, you got to play through a lot of Grandmaster games, and that's why I love video on the Grandmaster games because then we get the feel for it, the intuition, right? His queen is under attack now. His queen is a main player here, so. Uh, you got to pay attention to her, truly seriously. But, can you see? Yes, that gives her safety, but that just, it doesn't inspire you, does it? It really doesn't. So that's not the move to make. You're, you're going to respond with something with your queen, but not that. And, and not that. No, none of these. No, that, of course not. That square's taboo. Lubinfish, just one simple square, moved it up. Fantastic. 
No, it wasn't flash and, and dance. It wasn't, it wasn't an explosion of dynamite. But what a fabulous little move. Yes, he responded, but he still has full power. That's what I wanted you to see. Great little move. Okay? So, now Alakin, of course, look, he gave himself the chance to get that knight in this game, do it. Look at what it's doing. The knight now is hitting the pawn. The bishop now is hitting the pawn. The queen now is hitting the pawn. The other knight now is hitting the pawn. Look at this. Four major pieces of his army all ganging up on that one little pawn. It's that serious. Really? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Look at this. One, two, three of his pieces are supporting that pawn. You notice Alakin hasn't been able to blockade it, but he is being able to attack it, with, which is good, but just observe through the course of the game at this point. Just, just something to keep in mind. These double pawns, they're in the center for one thing, so they're not a weakness. They, they really do possess good power there. They are supported by pieces all around them. This is a sensational moment for black, and they're mobile. The just the threat. He doesn't have to achieve mobility just yet. Just knowing, both players know this, and now we do, that if he wants to push that pawn, he can. And then push the pawn behind it. He can because everything is supporting its forward motion. It has not been stopped. And that's what gives this such uh, power. That, that's what gives it the, the pop. So this is critically important to really grasp, once again, and how many videos have I shown this, you guys? But, but it is in so many games where the entire game revolves around just one piece, one little pawn. But its location... Its position in Alakin's side, central, supported, th that is critical. Just say, that, that's enough said. I just, I, I really, games like this just really, we begin to grasp why they make the moves and how to make uh, the good moves. That's what else is important. Now, bishop to g4 look at this he's still fighting for the center now he's attacking alakin's support pieces in the center <laughs> right that's a great move that's powerful that's really good now if alakin's going to respond by bumping the pawn it's going to completely wipe out his king side and he won't be able to castle if you leave the king here's the other here's the other uh, his king's still in the center, man. And this center is openable. Uh, man, if Leuvenfish attacks it right, he can blow it open and get the king. So it's nip and tuck for Alakin. That's what makes this game so great. Leuvenfish is not just a pushover. He's really taking it to Alakin. That's one of the things that makes it so great. Okay. And again, you can't ignore the threat. You cannot take the piece that's attacking you. No. You can do the second best thing. You do not, you do not, in this position, as I would have done earlier in my chess life, you do not passively retreat. That is not an option. Sorry, that would lose the game. That would be the most major blunder he could make. 
not going to happen. So what do you do? You go forward. You do have two pawns, uh, but you got to swap the queen. You, you've got no choice. Leuvenfish is just too powerful in this center. So you got to swap the queen. <laughs> Watch. Watch this. Leuvenfish says, I'm agreeable to that. However, before we swap the ladies, my knight's on the rim here. I'm going to put it at c6, giving support to the queen and the pawn behind the pawn. Wow, what a power move. Is that beautiful or what? You realize now Alakin is in a real fight with this guy. <laughs> He's not backing down at all. And now let's watch what's so fascinating about chess. The mite, that beautiful mite, takes the pawn. Now is the time. I'm going to take it right now. I'm going to take the pawn. And that single little simple act, it's not a powerful piece. It's just the pawn. But because he does that, Black loses his steam. And it's so fascinating how that works. Let's watch this. Knight comes to b4. Again, he's going to hit one of the pieces that did support the pawn. But now watch. Have you noticed how the power just flipped, literally, by focusing all the pieces on the pawn and then conquering the pawn, who has the most powerful center now? Alakin. Isn't that remarkable? Now this knight is supported by the knight, the queen, and the bishop. You're not... <laughs> and he is just emanating power. Isn't that remarkable to see? I love how that works. Therefore, this knight move hitting the bishop makes sense. It's, it's not so difficult to understand why he did that, is it? It makes beautiful sense. Knight now takes the knight. Watch the black power in the center dissipate. It's utterly remarkable how this happens every time when the pawn falls. The power just dissolves. It's so fascinating. The bishop takes f6. Now you notice the king is not in trouble, but the entire game is. Because this game is not about the king. This game is about that pawn, and it's gone. So, now, bishop possesses the square that the pawn had. Why? Because that's where all the other pieces were focused, therefore all the power is focused on that point, so it makes perfect sense that once you get rid of the pawn, you put your pieces where it was, and look who has the power now. Fascinating! I love how that works. It works every Grandmaster game. I see this occur in it. It's, it's, it's fabulous. Queen takes the pawn. Leuvenfish now can't swap queens. The power has shifted. Alakin conquered the pawn. Now Alakin is possessing 
the, the square with his pieces, yes, he's had a piece exchanged. That has helped dis, uh, dissipate the power. But when the pawn was there, Lubenfish could change the queens. Now he's backing off because now it only favors Alakin. That's great to see. This, this is a remarkable illustration. Very cool. Now who's got the powerful pawn? Now all of a sudden, the A7 pawn is the monster. That is the terror to black. It shifted from here to there. All of it. Now everything goes from here to there. Black is now in a passive position. White dominates the center and the open file with the ultimate pass pawn on it. Completely new look. Utterly fabulous to see how this works. And Rook does grab the file. Leuvenfish realizes, oh man, I, I have to I have to regroup, I have to get the file, I have to start attacking right now. The king never castled, my king's fine, his didn't, now I have to go. I have to get that center opened up. Otherwise, he's going to force me out away from this pawn and I'm had. So now Leuvenfish must attack with everything he's got. Everything right now. And Alec, the master mind of chess, does one of the most incredibly simple, small, quiet moves in the whole of chess literature. He simply pushes the pawn to threaten the queen. And she has to take it. He deflects the queen out away from attacking his center. You notice once again the most remarkable phenomenon in all of chess. I am so not kidding here. When the pawn falls, the power just disappears from the person who was who had the pawn and the other side gets the winning position and the power and it, now black is just scattered to the four winds and white has the monster and white has the fortress right where it's supposed to be right in the center and it's radiating everywhere that is stunning to see. I see it in hundreds of Grandmaster games. This is a clue for us in our games, man. This is fabulous to see that. With that deflection, now Alakin can castle. And he connects his rooks. That's, that's huge, I'm just saying. Knight to c2. Leuvenfish is trying everything he can. What a beautiful knight fork on the queen and the rook, right? No, seriously. Look, he has, he has uh, some themes that some of his pieces are coordinated. He really is trying to put something together. But now Alakin has the power and he's gonna use it here he comes so if 
Spawn comes up. Rook. It says to B2. I'll bet it meant to B1. Rook comes over to B1. And the queen goes back to E6. So black is being forced back to regroup while white has regrouped with a forward movement. Yeah? Let's keep watching. Queen comes back to E6. Now, the bishop that occupies where the pawn was with pure power now, the bishop now eliminates one of the fighting pieces of black that used to have so much power. And now there's nothing there for him. Fantastic. I, I, I cannot get over how this works. Bishop to e7. <sighs> Attack the queen at least. You got to have targets. Look, they're both trying to get targets. Yeah, that's a target shot, right? Okay. He is protecting his king, but it's not about that king. Uh-uh. There's your game right there. There's this game. If you decide right now it's white, oh, well, I'm going to go do a kingside attack. You ain't paying attention. Forget the king. You don't even have to check the king to win this game. Here's where your game is. And black knows it too. Right? So, queen one more time to b6. Again, keeping his eye on the target, on the target, and on the target which indirectly is on the target. Got the fabulous rook on the open file behind the queen. Pure power. Fantastic how this works. Queen is going to try to guard the, the, the rank, keep, his eye, keep her eye on the pawn, of course. Notice how black has been in complete retreat ever since that pawn fell. And notice how white has been completely advancing ever since that pawn fell. And notice that black has five, white has two, three, four, five, six pieces. The pawn fell, and now black is down a piece in, included. Remarkable. Uh, Let's see, we're, uh, queen to d7. Now rook comes to a1, of course. Double duty on the pawn, because now we have to get that pawn into queen. And that's what's terrifying black. f7, possibly get a counterattack going. If nothing else, you've got to get some space so you can maneuver, because you know some of these pieces are going to start making their way up here. You want to be able to get your pieces moving around, so get those pawns forward. Unfortunately, you got a bishop back here that's not being able to do so much just yet. Kind of in trouble this way. Bishop a4, boom! Hitting the targets that are watching this guy. He's going to get rid of them so he can queen that pawn. Here's where the bishops really do a song and a dance. The rook comes to c8 to give support to the pawn now. Once again, everybody's trying to fight and protect a pawn. Right? Bishop to a3. Blam! Hitting the other bishop. This bishop comes to g5, coming down toward the king side. Going to try to do a counter. Bishop to c5, once again, strong central dominance, giving support to the queen and the pawn. Yeah? Black bishop takes the pawn, the backward single pawn, the weakness in white's camp. He takes the pawn. Knight comes to d5. 
hitting the center, coming up to attack. He doesn't even care if he's in the line of fire. Bishop goes to e2, hitting the rook, possibly cracking the king side, maybe. Knight to e7, check. And the knight can't be taken, but it is hitting one of the defenders of the 8th rank where this pawn wants to get to. That's a superb coordinating move with the knight and the bishop and the queen. That's nice. Really interesting. King goes to h8. Knight takes the rook, of course. <sighs> Doggone it! The rook responds, opening the way. Bishop takes c6. And it's here that black resigns. Yeah. If the rook takes the bishop, of course, the, the pawn queens. And there's nothing to stop the back rank checkmate. If the queen takes the bishop, and the queen takes the queen, and then the rook takes the queen, the pawn still queens, checks, and has the rook. The rook will have to come back, and then he can take the rook anyway, and it's a back rank checkmate. What a remarkable game. I love Alakin games because they are so... And this was in 1914. He was, what, 19? Something like that. He was just a young squirt. Just a kid when he played this fabulous game. So there's your chess video. I will have more information on bishops. I was just, I really liked that one for the bishops. They were spectacular. But you didn't really learn a lot about bishops other than they can be spectacular like they were here. So I'm going to try to do some informational videos on bishops this weekend for you. And we can get you up to snuff. Get me up to snuff. I need it just as worse, worse or bad as you do. So Anyway, be good to well have fun. Stay out of the bad weather. And if you have to go in it, dress appropriately. And remember, keep drinking lots of water. And... Stop beating me so bad in the club, man. <laughs> I'm getting my Watusi handed to me. Hey, that means I have to study harder. You guys are fun to play, man. You're awesome. Ooh, what a great Backyard Professor fan club. We're going to become one of the strongest clubs in all of Lychus if we're not careful. Wouldn't that rock? I unfortunately will be at the bottom supporting all of you. <laughs> you real good guys, you go fight the masters and grandmasters. Us punk beginners will be there in about three or four or five years. <laughs> all right, be good. I will see you in the next chess video.